like up, please. Thank you, Marco. Uh, good afternoon or evening. Uh, I start with sharing my screen. <clears throat> Dear colleagues, before I present my paper on a rhythm and dive into questions regarding regular or irregular music structures, allow me to start with a small illustrative example. Uh, the project uh, I and my Prague colleagues are working on is called, as you have heard, Old Myths, New Facts. The composition Otep Miri, which I will discuss today, is an iconic piece of Czech culture. However, the general view of it, which is still broadly disseminated, is influenced by the interpretation of the founder of Czech musicology, Zdeněk Nejedlí. Although other interpretations exist, which understand the text as an original paraphrase of the Song of Songs and allegoric sacred poetry. Please uh, try to imagine that you were a high school student in the Czech Republic today and took lessons in Czech literature. You would definitely learn about the poem Otep Miri in English, a bundle of Mir fasciculus mire in Song of Songs. And what would you most probably hear? It is a medieval love poem in Czech. If you had a teacher interested in music, you might listen to a recording and you would learn that it is possible to sing this text. But the piece is not a usual song. It is somehow long and it sounds strange because of its unclear rhythm. Let us listen to a short musical example from the beginning of the piece. Now, back from school to scholarship. If we look at the only preserved source of Otep Miri, manuscript 42, written in the Cistercian Monastery in Vichy Brod in German Hohenfurt around 1410, we can immediately identify clear signs of menstrual notation. In the commentary to the most recent transcription published in the Historical Anthology of Music in the Bohemian Lands by Jaromir Czerny and other authors, the rhythm of the piece is labeled as, I quote, a menstrual instability, end of quote. Also performers prefer an interpretation which gives an impression of a fluent musical line and which does not fully respect the original rhythmic volumes. My recent investigation of the repertory of menstrual canciones written in this source came to the conclusion that Bayer scribe was a competent user of menstrual notation. He probably also wrote down some pieces now mainly from oral tradition at that time, and then preserved the rhythmic shapes of canciones to make them clear for singers. Why would you there be uh, why would there be a problem with rhythm in Otet Miri if it was written by an educated musician? 
This is one of questions I would like to discuss not only in my paper, but also during the workshop with Corina Marti, which will follow after the break. Let us have a look at the structure of the text as edited by the Czech literary scholar Jan Lehár. The poem is composed mainly from verses of eight syllables with two exceptions. There are nine syllables in the verse five, which are correct according to Lehár and understood as an artistic device. Uh, on the contrary, Lehár amends the word sobie from verse 10 as overwhelming, but there are two clear semi breves above sobie in the source and no problem with text andre of the corresponding musical phrase. We may ask well, whether there was a poem first and then the music was added or whether the text and music were written from the beginning as one unit. The nine syllables in verse five caused a problem with the text underlay and there were different editorial solutions proposed. The phrase is almost the same as the opening of the piece, but instead of four of the four syllables of Otep Miri, we have only three, Moi Mi Li, for the same number of notes. Then we have to somehow distribute six syllables instead of four. In his study on Otep Miri and Frauenlob's Cantica Canticorum, Christoph Merz suggested moving the word mne to the longa and then integrating the word biel with the following cherven to keep both phrases the same length. So let's see here. Now this solution does not please check ears because mne is just a pronoun which means to me. Why should the phrase end with a short pronoun? The solution proposed by Jaromir Czerny amends a presumed superfluous brevis Then the words mnie biel are sung on two semi breves and the rest of the phrase follows as underlaid in the source. This transcription then brings the opening phrase Otep Miri of six longs, but the repetition Moi Miri of six and a half longs and an irregularity occurs. If we trust the scribe and his sense for text and music, which he demonstrated on dozens of pages in the manuscript, there is, in my opinion, another possibility for how this problematic phrase could be read. If we amend the longa uh, and keep the following brevis and two semi-briefs in place, the text fits very well and the phrase is only six brevis long. Notwithstanding the structure of the poem understood by literary scholars who see six stanzas in the text, the musical structure of Otep Miri consists of three stanzas. They are composed of short phrases of four longas mainly, the exception of six longas at the beginning can probably be explained as an opening gesture. Another disturbance of the regular formal scheme appears in the second and third stanzas where a variation on the regular phrases takes five longas. But I now leave this problem for the following workshop. 
if we look at a former scheme of otep Mary, we can see parallel verses as typical for a sequence or like. For Zdeněk Nejedlí, this composition was clear evidence of the influence of the Minnesänger Heinrich, Heinrich von Mügeln, known as Frauenlob, on um, Heinrich von Meissen, known uh, as Frauenlob on Czech music. But the investigation of Christoph Meatz uh, came to the conclusion that there is no reason to connect Otet Miri with compositions by Frauenlob. He suggested rather that we see a source of inspiration in Latin liturgical forms from the circle of sequences of Adam de San Victor. My colleague Jan Ziegelbauer, who is very familiar with the repertory of late medieval non mensur canciones, suggests that Otep Neri could simply be called a cancio. But I leave this question for later discussion and turn now to possible parallels between this composition and Cantus Fractus. In the neighborhood of Otep Miri, we find two settings of Patren in Cantus Fractus in the manuscript Vichy Brot 42. One of them, one, the left one, a composition of circa uh, for uh, 400 uh, uh, briefs uh, of an irregular structure without any repeated phrases is preserved only in this source. The second, according to Miazga number 33, a form composed from only five musical phrases and achieved great popularity. We can follow its tradition bohemian sources until at least the 16th century together with a group of Menzor Patram settings, which entered the tradition during the 15th century. Of course, the liturgical text of the Credo is a long prose without any regular verse structure, but the composers divided the text and set it to music as though it were poetry. In my short study from 2016, I identified a way composing similar to the French form fix, as you can see in the picture. If we look at the basic musical units Otep Mire is composed from, we can think about a similar approach, how to achieve a longer composition with a clearly shaped rhythm. Of course, the text of Otep Mire is a poem with a regular structure. But as we have already seen, the structure of the poetry does not have such a strong impact on, on the musical composition, just the opposite. The musical setting tells us how to divide the text into stanzas, for example. The distribution of musical phrases within the piece builds a new independent musical form which corresponds only with the basic verse structure of the poem. As far as we know, the Cistercian monasteries in Bohemia were obliged to regularly send some of their members to study at St. Bernard College in Prague, very close to Prague University. It was the most probable source of knowledge of men's notation in the country and also of international repertory which was disseminated in Central European University circles as evident from preserved theoretical treatises. Can we therefore think about the same source of inspiration and intellectual stimulus for composing Otep Miri and Menzro Patren in Bohemia? At the moment, I do not dare to give any clear answers to this question. However, it is worth studying this repertory in the context of menzor canciones, as they also represent a musical thinking in clear metrical units. I wish it would be possible to state one day that uh, there was a kind of shared vocabulary music was built from, but first uh, systematic research and evidence of this repertory are needed. 
Thank you for your attention. And I'm looking forward to seeing you at the workshop with Corinna Marti soon. Thank you, Lenka. Thank you very much. Uh, there are two aspects uh, very interesting. The one, uh, a text, uh, a bohemical text with a notation, a proportional notation. And then the, the credos, uh, studying the uh, similar credos in Santembran Codex, I note that uh, um, there are many features such, such as in this, in this in credos um, that uh, um, are uh, for, for uh, didactical, didactical purposes, uh, for use in the school, then the next credo you, you, you can see, you can show the last credo mm -hmm. with the Patremon, the, the um, descendant fourth in the incipit is for, for uh, uh, the nation that for, is difficult to, to intone for a boy, and then Patris et iterum, uh, the third, descendant uh, third in ira, 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 and such such um, features are um, for use in the school. Mm -hmm. Also, I think uh, the the cancio in vernacular is for to 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 teach boys to sing. Uh, I think that that uh, there are very interesting uh, these examples. There are uh, questions. Uh, Barbara, is there a catalog of the credo settings? Barbara, uh, ask. Yeah, what I mean is in, in the book that you cite with Credo settings, do you have a catalog with lists of incipits, musical incipits? Uh, uh, thank you, Barbara. Uh, uh, probably tomorrow during the general discussion, I will show a tool we've been working on with my colleagues and uh, because and uh, the book uh, so i i have one short study there only but this is the okay i look forward to it uh, but also also there is noise in the background if people could mute themselves if they're not talking <laughs> and so the, the so i think there is still not any catalog but uh, uh, it is really necessary to make one and to start probably with our repertory because we have quite a lot of sources and uh, a repertory which is a kind of uh, really core uh, some pieces you find almost everywhere so in uh, bohemian sources mostly in Utrechtist sources but not only there and I wonder how much this repertory was disseminated outside well and this is what I want to know <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I think tomorrow, tomorrow there'll be time, and I will also show a few few slides uh, from from the database. We we uh, we are working still work in progress, but there are already a few things which which can be helpful. Thank you. Yes. Other questions. Yeah. Ah, Ellen. Yes, yes. So Ellen is interested in in the in the piece, and uh, I will. Yeah, of course. And there is. Um, yeah, I attached my my presentation to the materials for workshop, but I will put it also to my to my uh, folder. And uh, yeah, and I can I can put also uh, pictures, larger pictures there, if you are interested. Thank you. Thank you. Do you know other examples of uh, uh, bohemical canciones in, in cancionalia? Mm -hmm. uh, also in this 
in the same manuscript, there are a few, uh, few songs, we can't see on us, but uh, of a, so let's say, usual scope uh, with the stanzas and of a, let's say, Mm, as a usual, if you say as a cancio or just a song, something like this. Normal rhythm. And the text is, or new stanzas are sung with the same music. But uh, this Otep Niri is uh, quite exceptional. And of course, if there is only one source and one existing uh, record, it's a bit problematic. Uh, what what uh, what is the relevant material material to compare with? But uh, when I looked at it, I was really stuck by ah, uh -huh, there is probably something similar with this with this uh, uh, cantus fractus. Or it is a question whether we should call these compositions cantus fractus because I think there is not this principle of uh, uh, rhythmicized uh, chant used but there are really new compositions and rather yeah, things built from short phrases. And if you combine them, you can make, I think, very long, very complicated, very sophisticated forms, but you work always with these few basic stones. So I think this is something we should sort of explore. And I don't know whether this is something very typical for Central Europe, but I, until now, I found examples of this way of composing in, in Central Europe only. But if you know more from other regions, please let us know. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, there's Hannah is interested to comment. Well, I, I just wanted to comment. I, I wanted to say about you and Jan and Sigelbau knows. I just wanted to say that this is one of examples uh, from this manuscript, uh, which she brought 42. And because it has so many aspects of the repertory, secular repertory, religious songs, uh, liturgical repertory, I just wanted to say that uh, Lenka, Jan and myself, we just completed a c a three really long studies on this very manuscript, showing how this very uh, different repertories might influence each other. So this is one of the first manuscripts also with Cantus Fractus in uh, the liturgical repertory and also one of the first manuscripts with strophic songs included into the as litur used as liturgical tropes. So this is what Lenka has shown is uh, one piece of much broader picture that we just, uh, it was our major work this year of our project. So that um, just to make you, uh, to, to get to, into a bigger picture. Yeah, that's all. That was only a short comment of that. The, the key, I think, is the use in the school. There are evidence of the provenience of the manuscript from, from a school, a, a cathedral school or a monastic school, mm. or there are no uh, evidence. Uh, Jan? Question for Jan. Probably Jan, could you give a comment to Jan. that? Uh, to go make a comment from about the school in Vichybrot, maybe, or everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's mm, well, if we have the question was uh, whether we have sources from school schools. The well, we have some, a couple of them, and particularly when we were speaking about Vichybrot, there is no absolutely no record about the school but we have some some indirect hints that the scribe of this manuscript must have um, um, have uh, visited kind of this or um, an institution like this because he was admitted first as as orphan then he went higher and higher until he entered the community of the of the monastery, so there was was certainly a type of or a kind of school in which he brought, but we don't have any any records of it. But uh, in the study, what that Hannah announced, we found out that um, 
that the 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 music life in Vishibar was much broader, or it compro- comprised uh, many more occasions than just the liturgy in the monastery church. So it, there was also occasion for for young singers to to sing in some of of the of the chapels or other other sacred spaces there. So this is quite. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much again to, to the three speakers and uh, have a good uh, coffee break. <laughs> and we see.